what is good good people so this is uh, the anointments the, the anointed one uh, James True had had on a few different people with this one uh, this was fantastic highly recommend this uh, even even if you know you're not into or approve of or whatever of a uh, I call them plant spirit medicines. This watching this may open up certain uh, portals, portholes, uh, doors, pathways of perception. And so we're going to get into, uh, I'll play a little bit here, and then I have some cards that I drew. Uh, they're basically going to get into the, like, the anointment oil. So uh, the oils, the, the things that can potentiate. Um, an opening of awareness, and I, I'm like, like I always try to do. Um, I'm going to tie it back into the uh, the monad, the human form, uh, homeostasis. The fact that these things with my experience and perception and perspective these things at their highest potential are reminders div divine remindings of what we have access to inside uh, reminding of the communion the communication within within this reunion of uh, the, the emergence inside this reunion Relating relationships, uh, the relationship that we have with our perspective and our perceptions. So yeah, uh, this this is the very beginning here, and I just wanted to share this before I get into it because I don't know if anyone else uh, can, can notice, but to me that looks almost exactly like Genevieve and maybe because of the color that I have right here it's not showing up clearly but say maybe besides the straight hair and a couple of facial features but I don't know to me that that's immediately who I saw <laughs> for, for many reasons also Maybe because I've just been watching a lot of Genevieve, like, divining, communing a lot um, on many different levels. But also, just for me, specifically, like, the connection here. Genevieve, uh, James True, the connection. And then all the bears that, that James True mentions, like, <laughs> it's... <laughs> And crazy and then canna bear which is to me like that the ultimate here with, with all the all the connections and what we're talking about and then all the bear sinks so yeah shout out to canna bear shout out to shout out to uh Mazaroth. <laughs> In, in, and and in in and and the group chat, uh, and Zen Atman, of course. Uh, 
Yeah. Definitely, definitely feel all you guys uh, with, with this one because. Because of what we're getting into here, the, the, the topic at hand. Very in sync, very in tune, very groovy. Also, shout out to, uh, it's attorney and son. I know, I know he didn't want me to, but, uh, sorry, man. <laughs> Had to. Very in sync as well. And yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what we can do here. Try to find the place. Bye. I have a couple places. Really? Cereal. I can remember. Holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> so yeah, like the annoyment oil like at first I was uh reminded and what, what came to mind was in the inner um, alchemical process that happens, like uh, uh, the Christ and the state, the, the Christ consciousness, the oil that is produced inside. So there, we are going to be talking about here the uh, external manifestation and uh, potentiator of this energy that is inside each and every one of us. I kind of wish I, I was in on this because this would have been uh, awesome to, to bounce off of these guys and to tie it back into the uh, inner alchemy. Which I know these guys are, are well aware of. It's just this this was uh, their, their focal point. So the just specifically the frankincense and myrrh. And so these these are both Derived from an olive plant. A bowl. Just the volume here. Um, and also, just for the uh, occasion, I have uh, I have uh, a, a nice little blend burning uh, to open up uh, the memory because uh, with 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 the uh, frankincense and myrrh. Well, they use them in oils, but also these these energies and these uh, smells they they open up uh, memory memory banks as well, and it's going to be different for everyone. So so we can't pinpoint you know oh this is going to have you know one hundred percent guarantee effect um, for for everyone across the board because uh, we all have different memory banks. And what what I mean by that is, our specific embodiments have specific memories, and they can potentially tie into um, different lifetimes that we've had. So, specific memories and smells are going to have specific uh, triggers. And access access points for our uh, manifestation into this embodiment. But right now, I got I do got frankincense and myrrh, and then I got clove, and then sage is very powerful. Um, what else? Dragon's blood, and then also a blend that's uh, it's just called. Uh, Egyptian blend, but it's not like uh, from a source that, that creates it a lot. 
or like uh, in mass quantities. So, and it didn't say what the ingredients were, but in, just in smelling this, I don't even need to burn it, just in smelling this, uh, a lot of, of old memories uh, are, you know, bubble up from it. So I got all those going, and I just wanted to uh, share that for uh, potential inspiration to uh, experiment and see what uh, blend you can come up with and maybe what maybe helps you feel into an experience and into a memory bark of an olive plant. <clears throat> Both of them increase your blood circulation and uh, they're used in different cancer treatments and they're used in blood stasis. So they really get your system flowing. Uh, both of them also are uh, anti-inflammatories. MERS specifically has a steroid called Google Sterone. <laughs> So this is just getting your whole body relaxed and flowing and your whole system wide open. But yeah, also um, something that, that I recommend with people who, who are into uh, experimentation and plant spirit medicines is... Uh, combinations combining things to to help aid in the process of gnosis and I mean first and foremost uh, you have to recognize um, when you are using something a sacrament and when it is time to have a certain meditation and a certain focus because truly all is meditation but what differenti differentiates between uh, the quality of the meditation is where your intention and attention is, because that's where your energy is going to flow. The focus, the focal point. What is the focal point? And then continued engagement with a certain specific focus is what people commonly refer to as meditation. But really, it's just a, a specified, a specific type of meditation, a focus. So usually what I recommend is people do uh, try things separately, just, just by themselves, um, the first time, to get a... But the body needs that kind of uh, engagement, just one-on-one -on -one first, and then start to add either potentiators or things that have certain kind of effects. And it's the same with ayahuasca. Like it's you have to with the combining of things. Like you, you have to combine certain plants. And yes, you can get down to the chemical makeup of it, but really it's just how the plants communicate with each other and the effect that that creates inside of your body. The memory that that taps into inside of your body. It's not just the chemical reaction that's happening. Because if that was the case, then everything... These things would have uh, an effect every time on people, and that's not the case. Sometimes it just does not have an effect on people, especially whenever you have kind of learned to navigate just with your own meditation, your own focus. Um, I think it's Ram Das comes to mind when whenever he was like super into acid and brought 
Um, I think it, he was in India and brought some acid to a, uh, you know, some kind of a yogi type figure. And this person just ate like either six or however, whatever the number was, all, all of the acid he took it. And Ram Dass was like, this guy's going to die. I'm like, what the fuck? But this, it had zero effect on this guy. Why? Because he spent so much time cleansing, clearing out the body, accessing these things inside of him. So he, he doesn't, any potentiator for, for a person like this is just going to be, they don't need that reminder anymore. It doesn't potentiate because it's actualized. Now, what it's also doing is, is frankincense itself had, opens up the TRPV3 channel in the brain. So this is, which is a cannabinoid path. So this is opening up the pathways for cannabinoids and activating the receptors. So basically it's warming them up. It also is opening up and warming up opioid receptors. And myrrh is doing the exact same thing. They're doing it in a combination. And actually, there's a, I sent you a link. Um, there's a study, a huge study, where the two work symbiotically and open up these different pathways because anytime you have something, you've got multiple pathways that are doing a similar action. And this is just opening up the whole smear. <laughs> so any type of cannabinoid be it out of which actually frankincense itself actually has a cannabinoid. Um, it's yeah. not just cannabis plants themselves that contain cannabinoids. Yeah. Um, so that itself even contains a cannabinoid. But it's it's basically, if you're looking at it electrically, electrically, the higher you get the voltage, the easier it is for amperage to flow down it. So all these components, so these components right here, have absolutely just wide open that path. It's like they've cranked the voltage. So yeah, they're, they're trying to add on some uh, ingredients that, that may have been used in this uh, anointment oil. And I would say nowadays you could probably get A, a really nice combination with, with what is available to you. And what speaks to your body, because that's, that's going to be the most important thing. You, know, you can do your research. You can uh, see what works for other people. You can see the effects that, that has on other people. So for me, whenever I do research and I, I, want, I look up other people's experiences, or just anything in general, my research is an in-search, as in, I search for inspiration. I don't, I don't search for material, as in what, uh, what, what gets my mind excited only. I, I search for what gets, what lights up my whole beingness, and then that's the key a uh, little piece of information that, that I need that I will dive into. So I could be looking into something that has absolutely nothing to do with the thing that inspires me and that leads me to the next inspiration. That's that's the sinks, alright? It's guided by inspiration. And then you'll you'll just uh start living in sink city. <laughs> way up so any bit of amperage that flows down it any bit of cannabinoid any bit of opioid that flows down those pathways is just going to have screaming success it's it's going to have so much power now for the two cinnamons yeah and like i was saying it's not just about you know uh potentiators or opening up it's the symbiosis the, the communion that happens and it's not always going to happen specifically 
the same for, for everyone. That's why we have to uh, just... This is what is meant by, like, uh, smell the roses. You have to experience and, and smell and taste life for yourself to know how your body is going to respond to it. And then now he's going to talk about the cinnamons. And this is a, a powerful cleanser that, that shamans use. Um, in ayahuasca ceremonies, they will blow cinnamon on you uh, during uh, the, the peak, even. And that will send you up to another a whole other level as well. So yeah, cinnamons are awesome, um, powerful, so uh, be careful with them, and as with everything, uh, quality is the key, so whenever you get your herbs and spices, uh, it's all about quality, grow everything yourself, if possible, if not, Go for the best quality you can find. And I say two cinnamons because uh, at, after studying this, uh, so they call cassia. Cassia and, and cinnamon are the other two uh, components. Uh, we're going to say Ceylon. Cassia is also something that's that's commonly used as in, uh, in your, like, a. Uh, cleanser teas, as in just to, to cleanse the bowels and the, and the system. So both of these uh, cinnamons are cleansing, but also potentiators in the fact that they are potentiating the, the cleansing effect. Uh, they, they are potentiating the fire, essentially the fire in the bowels, and then also the fire in the mind. So that's why there are two cinnamons here, as above, so below. I'm cinnamon for cinnamon, because cassia is known as poor man's cinnamon. And they're both derived, again, from a tree that's basically the, a, a cousin tree. These two are the cinnamon tree. And the poor man's cinnamon, because, you know, what do you think of as poor? You think down. So that's going to be working in, in the lower realms, the, the, the bowels, the ball. It's the other two were all of trees. So we're also, again, getting a symbiosis and combination. Also, funny thing, uh, in the myrrh and frankincense combination, one was more specific to uh, da, 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 Indonesia, China, and Vietnam, like in the Ceylon cinnamon. And I believe it was the frankincense, and then the other two were more uh, prone to India and things. So this was also probably an availability if you were trading with one country and not another. You had availability of one where Ceylon cinnamon and cassia were close, so if you couldn't get one, you could get the other. But ideally, they work in symbio in symbiosis. Yes. So with cassia. <clears throat> It's used to treat blood sugar. It's in the 50 fundam fundamental traditional Chinese medicines. It's in uh, Ayurvedic medicine. It's used as a thermogenic, a purgative, an expectorant. It treats ulcers. And here's where it also gets real interesting is it treats tuberculosis, bronchitis, uh, <clears throat> anemia, blood circulation, PMS, it's a sun herb, and oh. magically it's used for consecration, protection, and psychic connection. And specifically, I found that it's good for clearing in conjunction with frankincense, specifically, and this is the fire element on it. Yes. So did, Where, did, you, did you say that the frankincense is the one that has the cannabinoid in it? Yes. Um, I don't want to interrupt you, Vigilant, but could you just give tell us what a cannabinoid 
who it is because I don't know if people understand that there's actually, guys, there, there's physical equipment inside your body that's literally put there in hopes of finding cannabinoids in your life. Can you expand on that at all? Yeah. I wanted to include this uh, just, just for that because most people, you know, uh, with, with cannabis, that, that's where they think cannabinoid came from, but that's not not exactly the case. And then what what James said there, that that's not exactly the case either, because your your body has these systems inside, because your body can produce everything. So it's not in hopes of, of, of having an external stimulation. It's because you're already set up for the, for the perfect setup. It, it, it's the perfect system. The, the only issue is we have not engaged these pathways for a long time. We have not, not been taught how to or encouraged to. In fact, it's the exact opposite with the whole system, the whole spiel, the indoctrination system. The schooling is a fooling so that you don't tap into these things inside yourself anymore. Because if you did, you would not be going along with how things are set up in the manner that they, they, you know, they, who the fuck is they, they would desire the, the system. Let's just say the system itself has become its own uh, enslaving entity. So the way the system intends for people to use it. There's, there's certain receptors that are inside of your body that when a cannabinoid, which is, a, which is an oil that's removed from a plant, and there's numerous plants, peppers, uh, frankincense, trees, um, you know, cannabis is the most well-known, that's part of why it's called a cannabinoid, because that's the most cannabinoid. So if you've ever seen uh, the show Hot Ones, uh, capsicum is going to be one of the peppers he's talking about here. Uh, cayenne. Uh, just, just capsicums in, in all the peppers, the, the Coval scale, or whatever it's called. Sco Scoville. <laughs> but, oh my gosh. No, the COVID mind. But, uh, yes, like, these things, uh, activate this these receptor sites so i don't know if any of you have had the experience of having a uh, an ass ton of uh hot food peppers uh spices and then feeling stoned from that but this is that effect and it is an effect that you can produce inside of yourself. Through focus, through the power of imagery, and we'll get into that in, in, in later videos, because I'm going to focus on this right now, not, not get too deep in the power of imagery, but the power of imagery is, is everything. And whenever you can create a dream out of that and whenever you can attach your senses to that it will become very fucking real you will smell whatever your living image your living dream you can call it a daydream or whatever but or hypnosis but this living dream will, will create a very real effect within the body and within the mind rich plant that we know of but there's many plants that have it and this is a receptor in your brain that promotes different activities and actually your brain will your body will produce a very similar cannabinoid uh, uh, chemical in times that your body starts getting inflamed or um, actually
actually one of the reasons that they originally tried stating that cannabis would cause people to go crazy was because when you start having a mental breakdown, your brain will start producing a cannabinoid and flooding it across your brain and trying... Yeah, and that's just one example uh, of the many things that can happen. Um, and this this will get into a whole n- another topic of, of stimulation, overstimulation of the senses, with which is uh, also uh, the name of the game with uh, the system right now is an overstimulation of data, an overstimulation of pollution of uh, dis-ease and of uh, dissonance especially in the cognitive kind just the whole spectrum right now is to overstimulate your body to cause you to continue to seek stimulation because for the vast majority, they have no idea what homeostasis or what balance is. So they're, they're taught even to rely on the system to provide a drug, a something to help find balance or a, uh, a likeness to, to a balance. But it's, you're always going to be bouncing back and forth and seek this balance until you realize it's always within you, until you realize that you have access to this, that you have access to ways of engagement to help you find this balance. This is why I talk about cold therapy cold showers, Wim Hof, deep level breath work, deep level engagements with nature, with the extremes of nature, hot and cold, fire and ice. And a light up. So, I'm going to try to find this last place here. Because it was it was a important little tidbit <laughs> it needs to be included and not excluded I talk too much fine dickhead <laughs> <laughs> well I was going to say that it's like it, the more I whatever this process and I hate all the labels awakening whatever um, the yes. more that I continue on this path oh, like, and they yeah they mentioned that but just Fuck yes. Like, being woke and enlightened, that's, you take it upon yourself to, to engage these things. You don't become enlightened from another person. You don't get woke. You realize the awareness, the wakefulness, but also the levels of engagement that encapsulate the whole spectrum not just being high and high vibe and love and light it's the whole gamut you have to encapsulate all of it and yes people want to talk about you know ascending and, and all this but no dude that you're missing the point if you're still using that kind of terminology repetitively and not talking about the descending that needs to happen. Because uh, with these ascension folk, what comes up must come down, right? It's it's, it's always going to be the case. It's, it's, it's a magnetic happening. This energetic uh, happens within uh, the in-between, within the poles. Right in the middle, right in the sweet spot. you got to see- seek that sweet spot. That doesn't mean being high, seeking the higher, seeking the low. That means experiencing both and being willing and open 
to experience it all and not very many people nowadays are willing to do that because in large of the indoctrination of how the system is set up how the parents are already indoctrinated and they pass that indoctrination down into the child and then they send the child off to be taught by the TV taught by the media to be taught by the indoctrination systems and the, all the answers in nature and none of the answers in medicine and again my wife has a medical background she was a charge nurse for 30 years until she retired as she's finding that all the things that she's done as she's researching all these books and germ theory and stuff they were all just ways to basically keep people in the system treat this the symptoms but never heal them and they just keep it in a loop so they make money off you and that's exactly it that that's the setup right there that's how it's set up to uh point focus on the effects and that's what we're going through on a big scale right now it's being thrown uh the, the focus is and that's how the media is set up to the how politics are set up to keep focus and awareness on the effects to distract and, and siphon energy away into a specific point and to distract from the, the root causalities because then you can just keep looping and bouncing and skimming on the surface and be and it's easier to control the stuff on the surface than it is to control the deeper level because once you get down into that you start changing the root structures and once you start changing that you change how things grow and sprout and you change the fruitions the happenings then once i realized there's all these natural herbs and and i start talking to people i was like why is it if i go on say youtube and i start telling you about all the natural healing medicines and vitamins and stuff you can get your channel taken off but then the same person i could go to the store today go to a shelf buy a bottle of white pills i have no idea what's in them i don't know who made them i don't know if they'll actually help me but that's normal I'll just pop as many of those and everything's fine. I'm a normal human, right? I can drink as much <laughs> alcohol as I want and pass out and crash your car. Yeah. But don't touch that other plant you're talking about because that's dangerous. Exactly. Whereas most of the time when somebody's on that, they're usually just laying back, hanging out, and just meditating, whatever. They're not like thinking, okay, now let's go drive in a car. You know, it's it, it just, it's fascinating. The more I go through this process, the healthier I feel I'm getting. I mean, just from changing my diet, not even dieting and, and not exercise, but just changing your diet. My body's healing itself. It's fascinating how many things I've learned from everyone on how to heal yourself. So, yeah. And the fact that they cut things out of our body, that <laughs> makes no sense. Like you guys were talking about earlier, the first thing you do to a baby is all this trauma. It's like, I started thinking about what do they call them? Uh, uh, vested, vestigial organs. I forget the, how to say it, but it's like, Really? I'm supposed to now believe that God made us perfect and added a bunch of parts like I need in case, you know, something, you know? So, oh, you don't need this, you don't need that. I mean, they tell you the, the appendix is basically just something that's going to eventually get, you know, inflamed and you have to cut it out or you'll die. I mean, why would he put that in there? See, like, the wisdom teeth, yank those out, chop the... That's... I wanted to include this for that. Uh, the appendix and the wisdom teeth. I'll play a little bit more of this, and then I'll, uh, you know, just just think about that. What what what, do, what does that word mean? Appendix. Oh, we don't know, you know. And then tonsils are another one. And, and that's just as above, so below. So they're they're storing something. So so what is what is the purpose of an appendix? things off your dick and it's just like <laughs> everything they're cutting and chopping and now i realize it's all garbage because god wouldn't make us like that to have parts be removed doesn't make sense yeah the appendix actually i have an answer for that one if i'm not mistaken 
that's what John Brisson said that uh, that stores a tiny amount of your uh, stomach bile in it. So if uh, in an instance that you eat something that your stomach needs to flush its whole bile, that the appendix then is supposed to dump out a little after it's flushed out, dump out a little probiotic basically of what your bile was. So yeah, so it's not the bile, it's a storage, you know, what is an appendix, you know, in, in books. It's to provide, to provide supplementary information, to supplement. So the appendix supplements, it's your natural, it, it's, you don't need to take supplements, then that's your fucking appendix. You don't need to get your appendix removed, because then, yeah, maybe you do need to fucking supplement then. Or you'll, you'll be led to believe more so. But... And then he'll go on to say, you know, uh, tie it into fermentation in, in the mother, which is the SCOBY. Um, if you're making kombucha, uh, the mother is, is the stuff on the bottom, the, the collected uh, probiotics and enzymes. So, and then you know, think about why the wisdom. Just just dentistry in general. That's right up there with with uh, top level corruption. With 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 it, within the body you know number one is, is got to be childbirth and, and uh, the trauma instilled in uh, slapping uh, the baby's bottom uh, cutting off the fucking even before I would say with cutting off with uh, the foreskin I would say uh, the umbilical cord, cutting that off prematurely. Just just the whole process of the baby coming into an artificial light, artificial uh, setting where everything's sterilized, there's not a natural uh, microbiome um, that would be in the air in natural settings. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's number one, for sure. But, uh, with, with the teeth, uh, that's, that's very much tied into, like, uh, your, your central nervous system. And then also because of that, your your memory banks. So also the things that they uh, put into the teeth and add um, into the teeth, uh, the fillings and the caps, and it's going to uh, poison, go right into, essentially right into the brain. So it's going to poison the brain pretty heavily. And then removing the wisdom teeth. Why are they called that? Well, why do they show up at a certain time? What's happening in, in a person's life during this specific time that they're getting, that their wisdom teeth are coming in? Those are important uh, questions to ponder. That way your stomach's able to rebuild its bile. You're talking about a starter, like a yeast starter, aren't you? Yes, exactly. Shit, uh, fascinating, man. right? The mother, yeah. right? Isn't that called the yep, mother? Yeah, that's the mother, yes. Wow. Look yeah. So I'll draw these cards now. Um, we're going to start with... Ha ha. 
Sacred World Oracle. Shout out Ghost Shadow. Go, bah, Ghost Shadow. Uh, I was gifted this from Ghost Shadow. I am Frog in a Box. I don't believe I have drawn this card yet. So, uh, yeah, since this is pretty fucking epic. Mr. Owl. Keywords. Education and skills. Considering things from all sides. Detachment. So right there, it's... Utilizing everything, but also, you know, utilizing the void... The Owl card is a harbinger of good fortune for those who embrace the path of the mind. The nocturnal bird is best associated with Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom, who is also honored as a warrior and artisan. Activities which require the use of acquired skills to create a conscious Outcome. The owl's physical attributes also grant it advantages in the natural world. Its extra large eyes can easily scope prey in the night, as does its ability to rotate its head in a seemingly full circle. The appearance of the owl card suggests you need to examine a situation from all sides. To better understand it, a more detached view is needed. So yeah, I've been saying this a lot lately. Uh, take a step back. Take a step in. Enter the void. Enter the silence and the stillness within. Next up we got the uh, World Spirit Tarot. Very, very in sync. That card uh, is, yeah, just everything right now. Got the pyramids, got the staff, got the uh, and the herbs and the light and the sun and the moon and the yoni and the portal and the flame that comes from what we were just talking about, entering that void into the stillness, into the, into the darkness, finding that light. After we engage the dark. Ace of Wands. Uh, Ace of Wands. Yes, this is the card. <laughs> uh, yes, creativity. A single wand blazes over a tawny desert. Both the sun and full moon illuminate the sky above. Three pyramids rise out of the sand. The ancient yoni, symbol of birth, serves as a gateway to the forces of the flaming wand. Hmm. The ace of wands, like all the aces, holds a magnificent potential. This card presents the best qualities of the suit of fire 
strength, power, inspiration, passion, and transformation. A restless, adventuresome energy is percolating beneath the surface of the familiar. This upsurge of creativity marks an auspicious time to begin new projects and take on new challenges. Fresh vision, burgeoning hopes, and a newfound optimism can give you the courage required to invent a new role for yourself. But this seed within you needs nurturing to grow to the light. Ally yourself with the fierce power. With this fierce power. It will infuse you with the vigor and confidence to face obstacles and to do what once seemed impossible. So yeah, uh, for me, those, those cards tied directly uh, into each other. Um, what we were talking about here with the fire, um, tying it back into the void, tying it back into the self, into accessing these things inside. So yeah, that was that was great. <laughs> I'll leave a link to this stuff. Uh, definitely check it out if you feel called to. Anything that I say or recommend is is just that a recommendation. It's an offering to uh, potentially potentiate and inspire. That's all. See ya. <laughs> Peace.